Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am Christian Burns with the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, Encompass Live is our weekly online session um, event that we do here at the Commission. We started in January of this year, and we cover any sort of library activities that will be of interest to librarians and staff workers across the state. Um, we have guest speakers, and sometimes today we have um, Christian staff um, speaking. Um, we do these every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time, and they are free when our sessions. They are recorded as well, uh, so that if you are not able to listen to our live recordings here on Wednesday, you can um, listen to one of the recorded sessions. Okay. Um, this morning, we have um, staff from our reference department meet the librarians behind the Ready Reference uh, Interlibrary Loan System. Um, and I guess I'll just let you guys take over. Excellent. Uh, so, Julian Beth will be uh, taking you through anything and everything you need to know about doing interlibrary loan with the Library Commission. Welcome, Crawford and Stanton, this morning. Thanks for joining us. We have a small group. Oh, and the land is on. Hi, Alana. This entire session was her, is her idea. So we'd like to dedicate this <laughs> session to Alana. Happy belated birthday. <laughs> um, thank you for joining us today. What we're really going to focus on is interlibrary loan and how things work in that particular world and from our desk. And you all are pros, really. So we're happy that you joined us. Please ask any questions. We really want to be of service to you and want it to be a smooth system for you. So I'll introduce myself and then I'll let the libra lovely librarians on either side of me introduce themselves. And I uh, hope that you have some faces with some names by attending today. I think that's kind of nice. We never know what you all look like until we meet you at conference. So. We hope this is helpful for you to know what we look like in some way. Um, I'm Lisa. You know we always introduce ourselves with our name on the phone, so we only have one man. So <laughs> if you talk to a woman, it's likely one of us or Susan, who's at the reference desk right now. Um, so welcome, and uh, I'm Lisa. I've been at the Library Commission for, oh, oh gosh, since 92. And it's been great, and I'm really happy to be here. And I thought I would do some icebreaker things. Poor Julie has been the survivor of many of my icebreakers. I think it's fun to, to just sort of um, talk about something non-librarian-ish. And I prepared them, and I said, I want you to tell them something about them that is that they wouldn't ordinarily know that's unusual. And so here's my big admission. I'll give them two. I've never mowed a lawn, and I've never boiled an egg, ever, in my whole life. And I just got older last weekend, and I'm, I plan to continue on with that. So, whichever one of you want to go next. <laughs> yeah, that's more exciting than I thought. I'm Julie. I'm Julie, and I've been at the commission since 1995. Um, two unusual, I don't know if these are unusual, but I love rain, and this comes up because it's raining today. It is indeed, and I grew up on a cow ranch in the sand hills. And she learned to drive at the age of eight, but I was a late boomer. <laughs> I remember seeing one of a little kid driving when he was two, uh, in a field, <laughs> around and around in a circle when he was two and a half So I was a late boomer. I drove to the one-room schoolhouse when I was eight, starting when I was eight. And last but not least, wow, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm Beth. Uh, I've been at the Library Commission since 93. Came the year after we did it now it's been a great ride i really enjoyed working here and will continue to and let's see i did not learn to drive until i was 21 <laughs> and i am so old that i hope at least some of you have heard of randy bachman but i actually saw him perform in winnipeg before any of you he would have been famous with anybody so that's how old i am <laughs> <laughs> well we hope that this first conversation with us in a different way when you call or when you email you'll know a little bit more about us and we really do want to meet you and get to know you so today what we want to do is just go up to the basics a little bit of interlibrary loan and i think had we named our session that more folks might have understood what we wanted to talk about today but you know for those of you who are signed up today if you ever want to play this for staff or refer to something this might be a, a good training tool and um, so keep that in mind if you've got new staff and you want to show them the ropes of interlibrary loan that's really going to be the, the primary core of our conversation today so what I'd like to do first and we'll each take a turn talking about things is we have something online called the interlibrary loan tip sheet and that really walks you through the basic of how everything works 
Chris is showing you the URL for it right now, and it is in the slide set, so you could get right to that. And really everything you're going to need to know, at least we hope, and if we've forgotten something, let us know, is on that tip sheet. Oh, okay, Chris is going to show it, and then our pictures will go away. Yippee! There it is. So that's going to show you everything you need to know, hopefully, about doing Instra Library along with us. If we ever need to update anything, let us know, and you can always just print that out and keep it next to your phone. So I'm just going to walk through the highlights of this, and I think you probably may know all these things, but hopefully we'll hit on something that's new for you today that maybe you didn't realize about Instra Library alone. How to make requests from us, you can do phone calls, you can email, you could fax, and you can fill out the form. And I thought I'd just give you a practical note. Listen, none of those get priority one over the other. We basically just go through them one at a time. Uh, so if you fill out a form or if you email something, one isn't going to get precedence over the other. Some people do ask about that, and I certainly wanted to assure you that no, we just go one at a time. Um, if you're doing the form and you have several requests, you may want to make it easier on yourself and fill out a whole list and send it in as an email request, rather than filling out a form each time. It depends on how you like to keep your records on your side. So, and if you want multiple copies, you certainly wouldn't need to fill out a form for each copy. Occasionally people will do that and will get a little confused about how many copies you really want of a book. So, that may not be the most clear way to, to let us know that. But it's important to let you know that nothing gets priority. A phone call doesn't beat an email. So um, go ahead and choose whichever way works for you. What we want it to be is most convenient for you. Um, there's our 800 number, and some people ask us, does the reference desk have a direct 800 number? And we do not. So you do have to call that number and ask for the reference desk. And that will be the quickest way to get to us. We are always here 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, Central Standard Time. And there will always be a librarian at the desk. Almost without exception, one of the three of us will be there. With the exception of just a few hours, like right now, <laughs> when we're all here. Um, and then there's the online form that's given in the URL in the tip sheet, the facts number and really whatever works for you. That fax machine sits really right where we are, so we, we can't miss it. It'll come right to us. We have two fax machines here at the commission, so it's, it's really right there. If that's easiest for you and your email's down and your phone is busy or something, you know, consider that as an alternative. Okay, so that's how you can contact us. And these are the important things for when you request items. There's just a few caveats. Um, when you, if you request something, it does have to be older than a year old. And that really just is because so many libraries will not loan newer items. I think that's up in the top, maybe there. Is it there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if it is a bestseller or, and I think this is going to date this broadcast, if it's, you know, any of the Twilight series right now by Stephanie Meyer, something that's really hot, something that Oprah's reading, something that's The Shack right now is a bestseller, or the Today Show Reading Club, or anything like that, we can be sure we're probably not going to be able to get that at all. If it's on the best seller list, if it's new, these are the things we're not going to be able to get for you. I put myself on the, the waiting list for the audio file of Twilight, and I'm number 16 of 18 people. Yeah, so we will often check Lincoln and Omaha's public OPACs to see how popular things are. It's just kind of a litmus test, and people will say, well, I don't know if it's new. Well, the way we'll check is either in books in print, which you've got access through, through Nebraska Access, or Amazon has a release date. And you're looking for the hardcover release, not the paperback, if there's multiple copies of it. So just take a look to see if it's too new for your customer. Yeah, and it's right there, the last 12 months, or on bestseller list. And for those of you who have book clubs, we can do multiple copies. Do try to tell us how many you need in your first request. Sometimes going back in and getting another copy can be a little tricky. So if you need eight from the get-go and you've only got six readers, go ahead and ask for eight at the start. And also don't forget about our book club kits that we've got here too. And we talked a little bit about those on last week's Encompass session. So if you need to hear a little bit more about book clubs, listen to last week. 
Um, the only thing that we need from you particularly are for you just to keep your records when you receive any item because we do interlibrary loan for about 300 libraries, school and public libraries. We keep all the circulation records for all of those interlibrary loans coming and going. So when you receive an item, we really need for you to let us know when you get it and you can email that. Yep, and that's the part in the box. <laughs> we have considered that to be of some importance. Thanks, Christopher, navigating so well. Every interlibrary loan during the course of its loan has an eight-digit number. Sort of like a social security while it's, in, while it's out of its home. And that number uniquely describes that book. And it's called a request identifier number. Sometimes it's on a barcode, sometimes it's labeled that way. Often many libraries have a different way of printing that item. But that is the unique number and it very much helps us update the record. So when you receive it, when you return it, those are both things we'll need to know. And very importantly, if your patron ever needs a renewal, if you can keep an eye on that due date, so many libraries really want you to ask for renewals before the due date. They're very charitable. There's just a few that aren't willing to grant renewals, but they really want to know before the renewal. And some of them will say that exactly in their policy. And again, you'll just say, I need a renewal on the Persian Pickle Club. This is the RI number. And I know you ladies have all done this before, so I feel like I'm telling you things you already know. Um, let's see. We can request AV, we can request DVDs, we can request books with computer discs, we can request all kinds of things. Certainly the lending library can just say no, but we have tried all kinds of things. Some exceptions would be the historical societies that prefer, like our very own does, for the patrons to contact the historical society directly. They don't use an interlibrary loan OCLC method to get their requests. So there are times when we will direct you or the patron to that place for you to contact them and we won't even be a part of the process. So with that, I think I've gone through everything that's on the interlibrary loan tip sheet. Laura and Carol, um, Ellen and Cleon, do you have any questions about the ILO tip sheet? Have we left anything out? And Rhonda from Alliance. And Rhonda from Alliance. Thanks, Rhonda. Um, no questions? Okay, Alana has no questions. Thank you, Alana. Okay. I'll just jump in. One question that I've been asked, I'm sure we all have, is uh, when it comes to asking for multiple copies, is what is the limit? Mm. And we don't really have one. Um, it, it is going to be limited by what you're choosing to ask for, and if it's something that hardly any libraries have. Um, we do, uh, when you're asking for a whole bunch of copies of one item, that's not a case where we're going to try to get everything you ask for from the same library. We have to spread it out so that we're not, for example, asking Lincoln City Libraries to, to provide us with, or to you, with six copies of the same book. So um, it's one of those it depends kind of things. We, we don't give you a firm answer on how many. I don't know, dare we say how many we've done? As many as 30, I think, at one time. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of hitting the upper limit yeah. because we just wouldn't be able to get that many. Right. Uh, I would say most most multiple copies are right around the eight to ten area, so that's pretty that's pretty standard, and certainly about as big as your book clubs would be. So, uh, yeah, th that's a great thing to bring up. Uh, it really depends on the holdings and world cap. Julie, what would you think? I just, I, this is kind of backtracking, but I want the people who are listening. I think are all very good about this. Yes. But, uh, just in case anybody's listening, listening to the archived version of this, and they want to know uh, what's the most important thing you do if you remember to do one thing, and that's to let us know that you've received something. And the reason for that is. When a library supplies a material, they they send they move the status to shipped. And say you get the book, you use it, and you return it. They can't when they get it back. They can't update unless we have moved it to received. So that's a really important step. If you do nothing else, just even telling us that you received it is probably the most mm -hmm. important thing. So. Okay, Laura asks the question, if you're using the books for a book discussion, how long can you keep them? And just like all of your libraries have a circulation period, every library that loans the material has their typical circulation time. Some are more generous, some are pretty um, restricted, maybe 28 days, maybe 40 days, it just depends. 
Um, we don't really know when we go out there asking them who are the big long lending libraries. And Laura, that would be important for you to keep track of your due dates so you could always just get your renewals in. Um, and Julie? Well, we do, when, that's not something that we control, right. Right, but we won't borrow and it from. We don't always know in advance what right. those are. But I will tell you that we tend to, we do know some libraries very well, like in Nebraska, and if we know that some libraries don't offer renewals, we tend to put them further down the list or not use them when it comes to a request like that, mm -hmm. when we know that you're going to need it for a long time. Right. So what we do know, we try very hard to, to get things from libraries that we know offer renewals yeah. when we can. Yeah, the longer you do, I know this from when I worked in the library, the longer you do with library long the more you get to know the regular <laughs> lenders, yeah. the good lenders, the ones that are going to send it how you need to and whatnot, yeah. how you can start with them a lot easier. Right. And something else I have neglected to mention, you know, you should turn in your requests, and again, I'm talking to the, I'm preaching to the choir here, because you all are so good at this. You should turn in your requests a week or two ahead of time. We are often spoiled by our Nebraska libraries who get things there overnight, the next day, you know, sometimes within two days and people are always so impressed. And we have terrific Nebraska lending libraries. But there are cases where we have to go out of state and things do take longer and it, and it often surprises our customers because they're so used to getting things quickly and they'll say, where's my book? I asked for it a week ago. And that is really still within the typical time of lending. We'll say one to two weeks. So if you've got students or people working on a project or a book group, I would give yourself one to two weeks and we are happy to ask for renewals. But that is pretty standard. And again, we are just so spoiled by our really fast acting Nebraska libraries for which we can take no credit but are happy to work with. And I interrupt you, you were gonna say something. Well, actually what you said just is a great segue into what I was thinking of is that sometimes uh, we've been asked, someone will call or email and say, well, I, I need this book, but I really don't need it for another three weeks. Could you just wait and request it for me a little later? We, we place your requests as soon as they come in, oftentimes in less than an hour. We, we have, our, our goal is to always place the request within 24 hours, and with the exception of weekend or holiday times where, where we simply don't see your request, we always meet that goal. But we will place your request immediately. And as Lisa mentioned, there are over 300 libraries that we place requests for, and we simply cannot keep track of, okay, so-and-so needs it, you know, a month from now or whatever it is. We are gonna go ahead and place the request as soon as you send it to us. But as Julie was saying, we're gonna be looking for places that will probably grant renewal. So, okay, you may get it sooner than you plan. We're not in control of when the lender might actually send it out to you, but renewal is almost always an option. Any questions after that discussion? Are y'all doing? This is probably these. These are all things you probably already know. It's kind of good to go over them again. Okay. Well, we're going to move on, and Beth and Julie have some things to share with you. Um, Julie's going to go over what we call a subject request. So and that's the that, um, yeah. And the slides you sent me. Yeah. That's kind of yep. Yeah, just the really cool. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to use an example that the last one that I could, the most recent one that I could find, an actual subject request that came in via email. And we do, you know, quite frequently have librarians who contact us and say something very similar to this. So I'm going to read you part of this email, and it says, I have a student that needs nonfiction information for a, a report on premarital sex. I have an article in my files. I have not found a book on the subject that's available. Do you know of any? So this is a typical, I'm just gonna go through how we would we would do this. Um, and, and tell you what our advice to you usually is in this case. But um, I, we would go to Nebraska Access, which you can too. And this is the, the screen that you see. And over on the right, you'll see databases available and you would, uh, for Nebraskans, and you click there on the button, and then the next screen is each other's up. And you can see these are the databases that you'll be choosing from. The one that we always search for interlibrary loan is WorldCat. You can see it right under books there. So you would click on WorldCat. Oh, that's a nice. <laughs> 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 that's funny. 
is why we have Krista drive because she's so good at it. <laughs> okay, and this is the t this is the search screen that you see that comes up. And being a librarian, of course, I try to uh, make it into literally a subject to request. So I did a subject. You can see if I was to the right. I did subject phrase. Pre I typed in premarital sex and did that. And then I also limited it from 2000 to 2009. I wanted recent publications. Oh, this is very librarianism. <laughs> <laughs> I have my librarian hat on here. And so let's see how many results that I got. Okay, now can you see? Yeah, it's, um, 95. 95. Um, so 95 books, and I limited it to books also. And so you can see if you, the variety within this, and we have hearings uh, to the Senate and uh, that sort of thing. So it's, it's quite a variety. And that's just for the last nine years, 95. So I would have just had, had to have chosen from these. But my recommendation always is have your student do this. Number one, they know what emphasis. Are they talking about teenage premarital sex? Is that what they're, they're which I'm going to guess that's probably what their, their uh, paper is going to be on. So I would recommend that the student, and it's very easy to get your student on and have them do a search. They don't have to be as fancy as this. So we're going to show an example of, of a typical student search, I think. So the next screen, we can go, is just doing a keyword search, putting premarital sex in and hitting search, not limiting it in any way. And we do come up with an enormous number of results. <laughs> the slide comes in. Uh-oh. There it is. There, okay. Um, yes, and you can see, we get books, we get <laughs> all kinds of materials. You can see across the top there on the tabs. And, um, but actually, I think that for a student, this actually turned out some great things right at the beginning because we have the opposing viewpoints, which would be perfect for mm -hmm. a paper. That's a so, great series. Yeah, it really is. And so right there we have, <laughs> I do love that second title, sex, opposing viewpoints. I decided that I would have selected the teenage sexuality opposing viewpoints. And so if you go to the next slide, you can see whatever shows up. Oh, I see oh, right. okay. there, it um, there it is. And if we scroll down, I mean, they could give us just the title. That would be enough for us to find this and place it. But there's also the OCLC number is further down. It's the accession number. And uh, down there at the bottom, second from the bottom, the accession number, OCLC number. That's actually the number that would be most precise in helping us to place the exact record that the student chose. Um, we have had uh, librarians who have sent in less descriptive subject requests where they just say, we need books on premarital sex or something like that. And we'll choose two or three, they'll say two or three, and we'll send them. And then almost immediately they'll come back and say, oh, we returned this one right away because she already had that one. Well, they didn't tell us that. We thought we were just selecting from, you know, the universe, they don't have anything. So it's good for when you make a request to always give us as much information as possible so that we don't mess up and send something that you already have. Uh, but in this case, um, I do think that the best option really is always to have the user. And they can do it at home. I mean, even if you didn't have a computer at the library, you could give them the information, they can search from home and make their choices. So that's our recommendation. And for, if they want to do it at home, you can give them their, your password. Nice that they get from their public library, uh, library or they can use their driver's license. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's easy for them to search from home at their leisure. Maybe it's a topic they have a little embarrassment about and they do want to search privately. So th that way they would have that um, confidence in searching on their own. And also, students sometimes choose videos they, and they can use them in mm -hmm. for their papers. And we have a, a high school, actually, that we get quite a few uh, requests from that include videos and books. So the students really are pretty creative, and they're really much happier with things that they choose for themselves. So that's our recommendation. Any questions about Julie's subject searching? Did, did that spark any questions that you might have for those of you who were seasoned? Can I ask you a question about how, how many of you have patrons that are using WorldCat in your library? Um, would, you, would you say, yes, I do have patrons using WorldCat in my libraries? Or Nebraska Access? No, you don't? Okay. 
It's just someone saying no, they don't. Okay, Laura, Stanton, you don't, and Rhonda, uh, Lyons, you don't have. Okay. Okay. Can you see that it might be better for them to be searching for themselves rather than us choosing for them? Because you would know them, they would know what they need. Is that, um, yeah, okay, good, good. We do our very best, but so often we just can't really know what they want. And so that connection that you make with them makes our transactions much more successful. So we mention that because we really want you to look great. We want those materials that come to your library to be so helpful to them and you to look like the magical library that supplies that for them. So however we can be of help, the more information, the better. If you want to know more about using Nebraska Access, we did do a previous live <laughs> on it. Yes. Um, it's, it's in our archives, so go ahead and search that out. I guess we have a whole session on an Encompass Live on the Nebraska Access and the new Nebraska Access, the new website that just went right. Through. Okay. Thanks for answering those questions. And Beth has got some things she's going to have okay. on this one. Oh, I use it all the time. Okay. Um, I use it all of the time, and we don't have much research done here. Okay, Laura, th thanks right. for that comment. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Laura. All right. Yeah, well, this may seem redundant. I'm going to ask you, Chris, to actually go live to Nebraska Access for the next part. And um, again, I feel like what we're preaching to the choir here today is you're probably well aware of this, especially if you, uh, you or your, your patrons used Nebraska Access a lot. But sometimes we get asked for a journal article requests, and it can be all the way from something very, very technical, which we also serve state agencies, so we get some fairly advanced medical and technical types of things. But sometimes we get just general interest ones, which may in fact have come from, from students. So, uh, you know, uh, again, the encourage your, your students to use it. So if you'd like to just log in, um, and I know we've talked about Nebraska Access before, but there are two things uh, here, two databases here, which can really help you uh, and help us too. And one of them is the Wilson Nami file. So are you, Laura, is this one that you use all the time too? Are the rest of you? Use Wilson Nami file? Well, it is a, a full text database of journal articles. So. Uh, <laughs> Alana likes it. Alana likes it, yeah. <laughs> she has to teach other people, so <laughs> you're probably going to feel like every time you sign up for one of these, all we ever talk about is Nebraska access. But if you just click into OmniFile, Krista, and... For all uh, good stuff. Yeah. 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 And it's free to you and be your patrons, so... This would be the and equivalent of the candy. Mostly I use World Cat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. Well, so this is just a reminder that if, perchance, uh, you had a, a student or someone else who was looking for journal articles, this is the way to find some full text ones that you could get right away without having to ask us and then us having to get them from somewhere else. And oftentimes, uh, if it's something we think is a more general interest type journal, we will check in the Omni file first to see uh, and if you you folks are from public libraries so i could also tell you the e-library is another good place to look at but it's, oh my it's taking it's really a lot to load yeah sorry you're all just kind of getting a blank screen here now yeah. we're just having having difficulty logging on so you, thanks for your patience can you work on that alana <laughs> 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 i could just tell you what i did mm -hmm. We may have to. <laughs> yeah, well, this is really slow. But now, those of you, I think particularly in uh, the western part of the state, may get asked about uh -huh. once a year for information about Lane Frost. And uh, we often we get those kind of subject requests. What did we tell We need books on Lane Frost. And yes, Lane Frost was a, sadly, he's deceased, but um, oh, a person. It's a, he was a person, yeah, a young man who was a bull rider but was unfortunately killed by a bull. Like so you typed in Lane Frost, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you get a search, maybe it would take too long to actually do the search, but you would come up with um, two or three articles, and um, one of them would be particularly interesting. And you wouldn't have to ask us to ILL this for you, that's the point I'm trying to make if we can ever get it to come up. Um, there's a pretty good article in Sports Illustrated that's one of the journals that's indexed by Wilson Webb. Mm. Okay, so it's that second one down, don't bother to click into it, but if you notice the little kind of page sign, that's full text. 
notes. So you could actually click in there and most teachers will now accept something that came from a database like this as, as the original. What you might not see with the HTML version is any pictures that were there. So if that's important to the person. But if it's a PDF file like that one, yeah, and if there were any pictures, of course it would look just like the original article. Uh, another approach where it was if someone had actually done the research and they knew that, that are, there was an article from Sports Illustrated, um, you could, I don't know if you can do it from here, if you have to go back to the opening page. You can actually browse for a, an article. You could either search for Sports Illustrated and Lane Frost, or you could actually go up, there's a, if you look at top right, close to the top, there's a journal directory. Yeah, uh, not that one, the, it used the blue arrow off to the side. Yeah, and you could actually browse down through the list, find Sports Illustrated, and, and you could browse directly to the article that way. So if you actually had an actual citation, I use this all the time when we get it. Um, article requests. I'll, I'll just, I like to browse a lot. <laughs> so, and you could hit the S. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's a little slow, but you can drill right down and actually find the, the issue and then just browse the, the articles in the issue and find it. And uh, I don't know if any of you had this experience, but if we can find it there full text, we can usually download it and then just email it back to you. Mm -hmm. So you can have it, you know, the same day as soon as we find it. Or you can do it yourself, and you wouldn't even have to spend the time yeah, contacting that store. So just wanted to make that point that this is a good place to look. If, if somebody particularly needs journal articles, you may be able to find what you need without having to uh, resort, so to speak, to us. Any questions for Beth about journal articles or Wilson Web? It really is just all your storage and indexing all in one place. Oh, Atlantic to all presenters. What are you asking? I think you had enough what we wanted to do. Oh, <laughs> well, okay. Well, be slow. Okay. Yeah, we want you to, to wave your magic wand and make it faster. Okay. And Laura <laughs> says, I have I have had the students use this, but they are usually interested on how many resources they can have from the internet. When they come here, they are looking for a book resource. Okay. Yeah, and this, this is what we, we have struggled with some of the, the classroom teachers where they consider this an internet resource. But actually, especially if you find a PDF out, it is the journal, right? There is no, I'm editorializing here, there's really no good reason why teachers should refuse to allow a student to use something that was found in Wilson Web as a resource because it's exactly the same as if they photocopied it out of the Twitter journal. Right. Yeah. In my day, it was the Reader's Guide. We sat down with the Green Reader's Guide and we had to go actually to periodical stacks of books, usually in a basement. And this makes it much more effortless. But it's the same tactic that we all used when we were in um, school libraries. It doesn't matter. A lot of the teachers need to realize that things have changed and just how you access the same item, mm -hmm. the same article. Um, and a lot of libraries are, due to budget and space reasons, but a lot more still mm -hmm. budget, eliminating their print subscriptions to the magazines right. and going online database only. Mm -hmm. they, only they know, I, I don't even need the print magazine if I've got Wilson Web, if a like, university or something subscribes to it. So there just isn't even the magazine sitting on the shelves anymore. That's not what the libraries are doing. The libraries are saying, well, this is how we get our magazines now. Right. And this is just a terrific resource. It's paid for you by your unicameral, by your Nebraska government. This is really your government dollars. Harder work. So yes. um, this is all of our library that's indexed by keyword. And I don't know about you, but I'm so spoiled by keyword searching. I can't hardly do anything without a keyword search anymore. And it's very simple. So. I hope that you can maybe encourage your students to think that books and articles, these are the real deal. This is it's just because it's on the internet it doesn't mean that they didn't go photocopy an article from Time Magazine. Sure, so. and um, I don't know if we have time now, but a sister yeah. database to this is the Wilson Biographies, which is another one you can get for free. And same thing, if the teacher is insisting that this, you know, they can't use too many internet resources, what's in the Wilson Biographies is actually the same thing that's in their printed Wilson Biographies volume. So it's really the, exactly the same information. So uh, I wouldn't, it's not the same as having to start a Google search and finding somebody's website. So um, 
and starting out as the reference library and that biography index was something I almost always went to without exception when a student needed an address for someone. That was just the, the place to go for an address when they needed to write to an author or a sports person. Mm -hmm. There's certainly other resources to do that, but the real key for that Wilson biography is address, contact information, and agent. It, and some students do have to write, and that it really was always my first resource to go to for that. Yeah, and I checked for this morning. I just typed in the word Nebraska. I went in and searched it, and I came up with over 300 names. And the one that I actually went in and looked at was Hilary Swank. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, uh, she's an actress. Yeah, born in Lincoln, Nebraska. Academy Award-winning actress. Twice. She's mm -hmm. won the Oscar twice. For, let's see. Um, that, yeah, that got me the 300. Or if you had, if you typed in Hillary Swank, you'd have gone right to it. And it even had, has a picture of her. So you can get journal articles, which aren't necessarily full text, but you also get an entry that you would have found. Um, yeah. These are, just by typing in Nebraska, I think they're over 300, so um, if somebody's looking for information about famous Nebraskans, <laughs> okay, I lied. <laughs> they she, round, she rounded it up. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers to the Grand Island Edith Abbott Library. Yeah, there she is. And I think they keep, it's pretty current information. I think they can, they constantly go in and update these. You can see why there's the keyword Nebraska why it keeps showing up. Um, so maybe that's all they need. And it's, they show you right there that it, it's from current biography, which is also printed resource. A very reputable so, printed so resource. So any, again, I'm editorializing, but any teacher should accept this exactly the same as if, if they, we had gone to current biography and photocopied that and sent it to the library. We have 20 minutes left this morning, and we certainly don't want to just go on and beat a dead horse here. Do you have any questions about anything that we've gone over um, or anything that we should expand upon a little more that you would like some information about? Any questions from anyone? You are, you really all are pros, so I feel like we're talking about things you've known. Let me ask you this. Did we cover something that you hadn't known previously? You'd make me feel better if, you, <laughs> if there was something that we, that we covered that you didn't know before. Can we hear from you all? Oh, thanks, Rhonda. Okay, so you picked up something new. Laura, did you get anything new today? <laughs> You're pretty seasoned. Ellen, oh, okay. All right, thanks, Laura. Yeah. Anyone at Crawford pick up anything new today? You, you really are, are okay. stellar examples. Has anybody had trouble finding the request to identifier on the paperwork that usually comes with the book? Not Crawford didn't. Okay. Laura, do you ever have problems finding the request identifier? We're really picking on, I'm picking on you today. Do you have trouble with finding that number? No, okay. We, we always email it to you when we respond to let you know we've placed the request. Uh, some of the folks that phone in, sometimes that number has just eluded them and I, uh -huh. uh, if they don't have tricky though too. Because yeah. If, mm -hmm. if it doesn't go on the first, uh, in first round, uh, that number will change. <laughs> from what we tell you. Yeah, there's that too. Uh, that only happens occasionally. Okay. Well, we also wanted to just. Oh. The presentation was very good. How do we convince the teachers to use these resources? Laura comments about using journal articles. Boy, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not sure about that. I don't. I think it's just an education issue for them, <laughs> um, as far as you educating them on what these databases actually are. Um, for example, you know, as I'm looking at right here, Wilson Webb. This is just the online version of current biography. If it's teachers telling a student, go to the library and find those books on current biography, you'll find some mm -hmm. things where well, you can say, look, this is it, it's now online too. It's the same exact thing. And for whatever reason, some of the teachers just don't, aren't kept up on that information, aren't kept up on how the fact that these books have now become online versions. Um, and it's just a matter of educating them on it. And if it takes maybe going into their classroom and showing them this screen, print this out and say, look, this is where it's from. <laughs> it just happens to be off of the computer, not off of the, the bound volume sitting in the stack somewhere. 
And for some libraries, as I was saying, it's a monetary issue. They can't afford to buy all the books and keep getting the updates every year. Sometimes the database online may be cheaper and you get the same information. Yeah. And in the ILL world, even if it isn't something that we or you found in, in Wilson Omnifile, if we did place a request for an article to another library, it's getting more and more common that they're going to fill a request by sending us a file anyway. Mm -hmm. They either use something like Arial and scanned it for print, or they're subscribing to it online, and that's what they're going to send us. Is well, a PDF yeah, file of their own, from their online subscription. Suggestion. Oh, Alana comments, would showing them the print magazine and a print off from Wilson Help show them the same article? Yeah, Laura, that might be interesting to print off the same article from Time Magazine and then from your shelf, take the Time Magazine article and show your teacher, look, it's exactly the same thing. We would be happy to check out one of our current biographies to you so you could do the same thing, so you could educate your teachers maybe on an in-service day. Say, I want to show you what this resource is, what it does, how much shelf space it saves me. Maybe we should invite the teachers to learn open house and demonstrate to them. That's Laura's That's a comment. great idea. Perfection. <laughs> you know, there always is that disconnect when I was in a public library to make that connection with teachers. They would often throw out these crazy assignments, and we've all experienced it, where there's no resource in the library for what they throw out, or they just don't have that connection of what a librarian can really do to help them and their students. It's really never ending, so that the better your relationship is, the better for your students. So that's an excellent conversation. Thanks, Alana and Laura. You could even advertise it, um, telling them that you're going to show them how they could uh, increase their collection, make their collection bigger, or something like that, yeah. and offer them cookies. Cookies. <laughs> <laughs> yes, food. Yes, if if you can make cookies, they will come. <laughs> Yeah, or a big coffee. But or yeah, when you think about it, I mean, there. Are, how many libraries in most of the communities in Nebraska can afford a collection that has that many mm -hmm. magazines mm -hmm. in it, or how many can afford mm -hmm. current biography? And what's right. great about here in Nebraska, and this is not the way it is across the whole country. <laughs> in Nebraska, we set up Nebraska Access and got special money, and we got we go to the legislature to get money to purchase this on behalf of every citizen in the state. Mm -hmm. Anyone can use all this stuff for free, at no cost to you, except for your already paid taxes. <laughs> right. um, and so this is a great thing that that's something that you show <laughs> the teachers too. This doesn't even cost us our school anything. It costs us nothing except for knowing where to go and knowing that that's yeah. the URL for Nebraska Access. The other issue to bring up is, you know, everything is not Wikipedia on the internet. There's Time Magazine, which is proprietary and something that Nebraska subscribes to. And I think the word proprietary is something we don't really talk about much. Just because it's on the internet doesn't mean that you didn't have special access to it. A Wikipedia entry has its value. Actually, I use it a lot in reference for quick data. I, I certainly can't see that. But I wouldn't put it up against current biography for having more vetted information. I would choose current biography and then maybe a Wikipedia entry alongside. But that's proprietary. We've subscribed to it. Wikipedia is a good starting point. And then on almost every article I've looked at, there's citations mm -hmm. at the bottom of it that are to the actual articles that they got the information from, the right. news reports, the Time Magazine, the, you know, the actual official homepage of whatever this yeah. article is about. But I think it's that Wikipedia entry that's tainted some teachers to, to say that's an internet resource. So we, I think that's an excellent point, and maybe a whole session worth talking about what's valid on the internet for <laughs> students and teachers who agree upon. But Laura, you ask a really good question, and Alana has helped us. And um, yeah, big cookies, really good cookies. <laughs> and they will come to your open house, and you can make that relationship with your teachers a valuable one. So your students and you will not be frustrated by what you can provide for them and already have. Any other questions that we can answer? We don't want to go long just because we can. All right. Oh, oh. Um, it's nothing. I, I keep thinking of the problems. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's ever happened to you, but it occasionally happens to other people where they get a book they didn't ask for. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's because we screwed up and placed it for the wrong library. I did it myself last week. Sometimes um, it's a problem at the other end. And I 
and I would defer to Julie to maybe explain why occasionally there's a, a mix up in mailing labels or something like that where the lending library inadvertently sends it to you instead of somebody else. Yeah, it's usually a, a mailing label switch. They just put the wrong label on the wrong box. So uh, it's important when you return those, uh, it's good to talk to us first. And because sometimes, if, and I realize not all libraries have multiple staff members, but some do, and sometimes one will call it in and forget to write it on the notepad. <laughs> and so the person who opens the box looks at the notepad, but they keep track of these things on and says, we didn't order this. But, and if they just need, you know, so you need to visit with us first to see if we messed up or what the deal was. We but, save your emails for but literal years. But say it's a, a mailing label mm -hmm. switch or something like that, um, where they just sent, the, the landing library sent it to the wrong place. In that case, you'll need to put a note on it that said, we did not order this. Um, and sometimes we can figure out, for, if you give us a clue like that, we can figure out um, which library might be getting yours, and you can even switch them. You can send them to it directly to the library that did request it, and they can send it directly. And that way you can get them faster than routing them back to the lending library. So it's good to visit with us. That would be my, my advice. First, talk to us about uh, this strange item that showed up on your, <laughs> your mailbox, um, and we'll help you sort it out. Once in a while, though, an interlibrary look just goes crazy in the wrong direction yeah. because your name and your town yeah. sounds a little like another town yeah. in Ohio or Michigan, and it really goes to the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. And we have no record, and we can't look for anything, and it just... There's so many things that can go wrong in an interlibrary loan. Um, it's just detail-laden, and things can go the wrong direction. I would advise when you return those, though, to put a note on it that said, we didn't order it you should check to see who did want it because otherwise that one who requested it will never get it and they'll be waiting and waiting and waiting and then when they finally investigate it the library that got it back will have checked it in if they don't have a note not even realizing that it never got to the location it was supposed to go yeah they have no clue so it's well it seems frustrating to you we're happy to help you solve the mystery it happens all the time mm -hmm. it's no problem for us we'll do as much investigating as we possibly can to make it makes sense to you and to us so that we can communicate with the lending library who had a goof that day to see where it went, where it's supposed to go. And we know it's, it's annoying and you will have to pay the return postage, and, but many of you are very helpful and are willing to just forward it on to the, if we can figure out which library it should have gone to, to just forward it on to them. And we track all that sort of thing too. So we, uh, I think, you're all very good colleagues and helpful to each other too. I mean, it's happened many times where we find, you know, someone lets us know they got something that didn't, they shouldn't have gotten. And if they, if you can just wait a little bit until we have a chance to respond, oftentimes we can tell you who it should have gone to. And usually, um, the person who didn't, who shouldn't have gotten it, is willing to send it on to the one that it should have. Or say you get the wrong format. You might have ordered an audio book and you get the print and it was just because they didn't look carefully at the request. Mm -hmm. So we can usually call and say, um, you really requested that on TV. And then they'll, they'll, the same library will immediately you know, respond mm -hmm. and send you the CD. So. Yeah. Yep. It's an imperfect process. <laughs> right. <laughs> the time it, works, so. it works really well. And but when there are snags from time to time. We also just wanted to say, whenever you have a reference question of any sort, an interlibrary loan and reference are so married together, you know, never hesitate to ask us if you're stumped on something. I think we've all agreed, at least I would never want to work in a one-person library. I certainly need someone to bounce things off. And amongst our staff here, I'm amazed at the knowledge that we have, or contacts that we have, or spouses that we have, who have access to great resources. So we try to be real, very well connected. And so if you've got a stumper of a question, we love those. We'd love to help you and call us with anything or email. It's never too odd. I'm always intrigued by someone who says, I have a really hard question. Inevitably, those aren't the hard ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those are actually pretty simple uh, or are not as odd as some that we've had. So never hesitate to ask us a single thing. We love being reference librarians, and that's why we're here and still at it after so many years, because we can't get enough of it. So call us, email us, fax us, fill out a form, however is easy. And we have actually online chat, if that's something that appeals to you. 
uh, and that you don't even have to identify who you are if you don't want to do so. You just come to us as a number and we don't know who you are and we'll do our very best to help you. So we are grateful you are there. You're our job security. We need you. Thank you very much. Any last call for questions? <laughs> Alana, it's all for you. We do this all for you. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. Crawford, do you have a question? How can we answer your question? No. Oh, she's just, okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. We're really glad you joined us. It's nice to get to meet you. Okay, well, with, if there aren't any questions, we will finish up and yes. sign out for the hey, day. Thank you very much for attending today. Thanks um, this session was recorded, will be available probably this afternoon for you to re-listen to it or to hear the recording. I um, hope you'll join us next week for Encompass Live, where our topic will be Google Maps, and Alana Navani, who's right there, will be telling you how you can use the full tips and tricks for using Google Maps and how it can be used um, for your library and your library websites. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye-bye.